So, the other day someone asked me to uh, make a video talking about uh, this mass shooting that happened in New Zealand a, little, a couple of days ago. Um, and then another commenter came along and said that I wouldn't do it because it didn't have anything to do with sex. And I felt like, uh, you know, I kind of resented that because I feel like I, I don't really only talk about sex. And, and even then I mostly don't really even talk about sex more than I talk about relationships between men and women I mean they would in so facto require you know sex and sexuality but I mean like I'm, I wasn't really like I've never really like just talked about sex by itself you know what I mean like usually I talk about like like why it's important you know and and, and why you should respect it you, you know I don't know I felt a bit offended there but I then I realized that like I've never really made a video where I've explained why I don't talk about spree killers, why I, I normally don't talk about, you know, topics of, of uh, like, mass shootings and mass killing. Even, there was even one that actually happened in Jacksonville that I did not speak about, again, because, to be frank, I don't like talking about subjects of uh, death and destruction, um, mostly because I feel like there isn't anything I can say that um one just would not have already been covered i mean i don't know how many times you can hear this is a heinous act this guy is evil and bad and evil and you know i mean i, I think it's kind of obvious i don't really think i need to come along and say that i don't think that there's any i mean there's always the 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 platitudes of you know pray for these people you know pray for the for, for the survivors and i don't feel a need to tell people to do something that a hundred other people are going to tell them to do so I just I just don't talk about it because I feel like there's nothing I can say. There's nothing really I could I can analyze or look into. Um, only only Elliot Rogers was one I did several years ago because I understood where he was coming from because I empathized with him, um, which isn't the same thing as me saying that I condemn his actions. I don't know. Um, but basically, what I was saying is I, I get where he was coming from. You know, um, but I don't like talking about these subjects because I feel like there aren't. There's only one real solution, and that solution is how much you just don't fucking kill people. I'm not, I'm not. Like seriously, you just don't kill people. You know, I don't know what else to be said there. Is people are evil, done. And that would be, and that I don't know. You know, I don't know. So I don't, I don't, I let other people talk about it because I just don't like talking about these types of situations. I don't like the empty platitudes of. Not naming the guy only so you can morally grandstand. Like I've seen a couple of different videos like that. I'm not going to say the Young Turks love to do this shit. I'm not. I'm not gonna say his name. And I'm like, okay, thank you, news broadcasting uh, channel. That's not fucking telling me the news. I appreciate that. Um, I'm not, and I'm not. I'm not that kind of person, you know. Um, I just don't. I just. I haven't committed the guy's name to my memory, so I can't tell you. But I have read his. Uh, manifesto and th there are a couple of things that really stick out to me and and that's why I can feel I can actually you know make a video talking about this because his manifesto interestingly enough is in and of itself a critique of our culture it's a very direct and straightforward critique and it really shows his understanding of, of the media circus that's revolves that, that, that revolves around mass shootings and I want to highlight a couple of different areas and show you guys just how methodical and kind of downright evil this person this guy was comic book joker-esque evil and you might say you might think i'm saying that to be funny but i'm not like his his literal intent was to cause chaos so he is genuinely his, his literal intent was to create a reaction so a lot of people say that his manifesto is trolling and but it but it but they're not wrong and that's what's terrifying about this guy in in particular i feel is the fact that, excuse me, not only how methodical he was, not only how much he thought about this shit, but how much of a direct critique of our culture this is manifesto was. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read out different parts of his manifesto. Not the whole thing, because now we'll take way too long. But I'm going to read out different parts of his manifesto, show you guys where he came from, and showing you guys how he is directly attacking the way the media reports on these different things and how he was directly challenging the world to divide itself and how unfortunately and he's right and the world has is as always dividing itself so let us begin i'm gonna do this a little differently i, I normally try to go one long take and like take takes into different like ideas like say a paragraph would be in an essay but on today, there's going to be lots of different cuts. It's not a format change. It's just it's just going to be easier to organize the readings. So, 
If you see lots of cuts, that's why. We're gonna get into it now. So we're gonna take it from the top. We're gonna take it from the very beginning of uh, his manifesto to see uh, where he's coming from. So to start us off, he says, yeah, well, actually, there's a little bit of a, uh, a poem about rage that I'm not going to read. But instead, I'm going to be reading his actual manifesto. And I'll put a link in here so you guys can read it for yourselves. It goes, it's the birth rates, it's the birth rates, it's the birth rates. So you guys should already know where this, where this is coming from. If there's one thing I want you to remember from these writings, it's that the birth rates must change. Even if we were to deport all non-Europeans from our lands tomorrow, the European people would still be spiraling into decay and eventual death. Every day we become fewer in number, we grow older, we grow weaker. In the end, we must return to replacement fertility levels or it will kill us. To maintain a population, the people must achieve a birth rate that reaches replacement fertility levels. In the Western world, this is roughly 2.06 births per woman. So... I don't really need to read, I guess, all of this. What I think is very important here is if we skip down here, we can see that he literally writes all through immigration. This is ethnic replacement. This is cultural replacement. This is racial replacement. This is white genocide. So who is this man? This guy is clearly of the white nationalist ideology. He is clearly a man who believes that white people are dying out and are being replaced by these different Muslim immigrants from all these different countries, all these different refugees. Now, the problem being is that he is not wrong so far as the fact that there are lots of different Muslims being flooded into European countries. I actually recently talked to a, a woman the other day about how different her life is now, that there are different Muslims. She was from a European country um, on how different... You know, refugees have come and how they have kind of made life a little less safe for her and how different experiences she's dealt with. In other words, these refugees are having a direct impact on the European population that they are a part of. Now, of course, the obvious response to any of this is that death does not warrant the fact that these people have come to escape their war-torn country. And that's true. It, I mean, it, again, this is where I feel like I don't really need to make videos when I talk about this stuff because I feel like saying it, it's, it's kind of obvious that you shouldn't go around killing a bunch of people because, you know, because other people have done something wrong, you know, obviously. I feel even silly having to explain that, but... I do think it's very important that we we take a look at the fact that this is not a mindset that that is not without merit as in some people might misinterpret that statement as in there is a direct impact that the refugees are having on the population of European people now is the correct response to go out and kill them again I feel it should be very fucking obvious when I say no of course not but you, you know I, but you know, people. Now we're gonna move forward and read about his upbringing uh, briefly. I think this is very important in what I'm trying to show you guys about where he's coming from and like how he was more created than he was born. He says, uh, who are you? So basically the way he's formatted his own manifesto is just a bunch of different questions that would inevitably be asked or maybe even misinterpreted or lied to in the media. And so this, this manifesto's format itself is a direct challenge against the lies and the misinformation that the media loves to give out to you guys in order to spin a narrative in their own particular way. He is trying to show you directly what he stands for and where he's coming from, right? Which means that uh, our foe here has thought very critically about this and he has analyzed the way the media reports on different things. I mean like in general, I'm talking about liberal conservative. Like he's, he's looked at how they're going to react and what they're going to do and he even has prescriptive answers in his manifesto. So there is no way you can misinterpret him, okay? That is, that is what he desires, all right? So I want you guys, so check this out, right? Who are you? He says, just an ordinary white man, 28 years old, born in Australia to a working class low income family. My parents are of Scottish, Irish, and English stock. I had a regular childhood without any great issues. I had little interest in education during my schooling, barely achieving a passing grade. I did not attend university as I had no interest in anything offered in the university to study. 
I worked for a short time before making some money investing in BitConnect, then used the money from investment to travel. More recently, I've been working part-time as a kebab removalist. I am just a regular white man from a regular family who decided to take a stand to ensure a future for my people. So I want you guys to, to take note of the fact that um, our friend here is not someone that stems from trauma or neglect, at least nothing that he has placed in his manifesto. So we're not going to be able to blame any of this on some random mental illness that occurred. And of course, that was his, that was his point, obviously. His intent was to show you guys or to show anyone who would be reading this manifesto that he is not some crazy person that came from the woodwork. You know, um, he is a normal person who was frustrated at the treatment of his people. So in his mind, at the very least, you know, he is the hero of this tale. And that's and that's what's really interesting about villains in general, actually. Um, one thing I find very interesting is how people are always able to analyze, you know, comic book characters or anime characters and, like, understand their, their inner workings and motivations. But for some reason, when it comes to, like, real-life human beings, all of a sudden, all of that analysis just goes out of the fucking window. <laughs> and it's just, it's just always some simple answer or solution. And the reason why that, that always goes out of the window is because when you treat a person this heinous as like a human being that has thoughts and feelings people think that you're empathizing people think that you're defending them you know no one wants to acknowledge the fact that this is a person that and that he has thought about it, and that's what makes him even more so dangerous than just someone crazy or, or random which we'll see now as we will continue to read his manifesto so let's move on to the part where I, which is the next question actually which is, why did you carry out the attack? He says, to most of all, show the invaders that our lands will never be their lands. Our homeland is that our own in that as long as white man still lives, they will never conquer our lands and they will never replace our people. It is to take revenge on the invaders for the hundreds of thousands of deaths caused by foreign invaders in Europe lands throughout history. To take revenge for the enslavement of millions of Europeans taken from their lands by Islamic slavers. To take revenge for the thousands of European lives lost to terror attacks throughout European lands. To take revenge for Ebba Akerland. Or I'm, I'm sure I pronounced that name incorrectly. If I understand this correctly as well, I think she was a young lady who got ran over in Sweden. Yeah, she was an 11-year-old victim that occurred in a Muslim terrorist attack. So again, so this was purposeful. His point here was to sway the hearts or at least to show you guys that he is not attacking randomly. That this is not an attack that spurred on a Tuesday afternoon. This is a direct response to the Muslim terrorism that has been occurring. And the problem here is the fact that he is not incorrect in the fact that Muslim terrorism does indeed occur and does indeed happen. So it, it's, it's just an inescapable reality. Now, of course, once again, for those of you all no, I'm not saying that it's fine to go out and kill 49 Muslim people who have done nothing wrong to you, okay? I'm not saying that at all. Thank you. Just for those people out there who think that I'm, I'm empathizing with this. I'm not. There, I said it. So, To directly reduce immigration rates to European lands by intimidating and physically removing invaders themselves. Now, here's the one that is really critical. And then again, I'm going to, I want to highlight this one. It goes, to agitate the political enemies of my people into action to cause them to overextend their own hand and experience to the eventual, eventual and inevitable backlash as a result. Next line, to incite violence, retaliation, and further divide between the European people and the invaders currently occupying European soil. So again, my friends, this is a purposeful attack with the purposeful intent to cause derision between Muslim refugees and any given current European population. He has thought this out. He has thought this through. And the thing about it all is, is it is working and it's going to continue to work until people can see exactly what he is going for.
The truth of the matter is, this also, again, is a situation that has no real easy solutions to it. You know, um, again, I've made lots of different videos why I don't like white nationalism, why I think it's stupid, but the truth of the matter is, there is a, a reasonable fear and a reasonable frustration European people would have in abating or, or having Muslim populations in their, you know, in their, in their area. Used to say, to show the effect of direct action, laying a path forward for those that wish to follow, a path for those that wish to free their ancestors' lands from the invaders, grasp, and to be a beacon for those who wish to create a lasting culture to tell them they're not alone. To create an atmosphere of fear and change, which drastic, powerful, and revolutionary action can occur. So basically, again, he's he's saying that um he he wants to create a, a revolution. I don't know about revolution, but he wants to basically incite some violence. He wants to incite some change. He wants to make people uncomfortable and angry. And. The best way to do it, unfortunately, rather than make a couple of YouTube videos, is to shoot a couple of people directly. So what is he, what is the critique of our culture here? He's saying that awful, terrible events will occur or will gain more traction for any political ideology than well-reasoned, formatted Arguments because there's lots of different white nationalists who are on YouTube. Uh, not not really a lot I see very often anymore. Um, but there was a time where well, white nationalism was definitely growing on YouTube. Uh, and it just kind of crumbled and stopped, or at least I I haven't noticed a growth recently. But basically, his point here is to say that um, one of the best ways to get people to pay attention to what you're you're going to say and what you're going to do. Is by being, I mean, put it bluntly, by being a, a terrorist. And again, he's not wrong. I mean, look at what has happened. Look at what's going on currently. And for as much as people would like to say they don't want to spread his manifesto and his ideas, I mean, unfortunately, the young Turks or even Royal Millennial refusing to spread this stuff is not going to stop it from occurring, unfortunately. Because we, in order to defeat our enemies, we have to know what they're thinking about. And honestly, to defeat our opponent here, it, there's a very simple and obvious solution, which I'll, I'll cover at the end of the video. But before we get there, let's just keep reading. See what else that he has to say. He asks, what do you want? That's one of the questions he believes someone would ask him. And immediately he says, we must ensure the existence of our people and a future for white children. So again, he's doubling down on the fact that he is indeed a white nationalist so in his I'm, I'm skipping ahead by the way next couple of uh sections are going to be rapid fire right <clears throat> so he has a bunch of different preemptive questions that will inevitably appear you know once you know let's hit the mainstream media <clears throat> excuse me and i want to read them out because the question is were you says are you a racist? He says, yes, by definition, as I believe racial differences exist between people and they have a great impact on the way that we shape our society. I also believe fertility rates are part of those racial differences and that immigrants are lands. High fertility must be forced out to ensure the existence of our race. So, yes, I am a racist. Goes, were you slash are you a xenophobe? No, no culture scares me. I am only wary of those cultures with higher fertility rates replacing others. Were you slash are you Islamophobic? Or A is or would be in Islamophobe. He goes, No, I am not afraid of Islam. Only that, due to its high fertility rates, it will grow to replace other peoples and faiths. So basically here's the point. He's trying to be very, very consistent and ironclad on where he is coming from. That he is trying to paint himself out to be a normal average Joe hero of the white race and that he is doing this out of necessity that he is not doing this out of any degree of hatred he's not doing this because he's crazy or he just you know he's Islamophobic no he, he is trying to make it at least in his manifesto show you guys plain and simple that I am doing this because I want our race to survive so he's trying to paint himself out to be the hero who has done what he needed to do rather than some crazy spree killer who is just has hatred in his heart which is actually pretty interesting actually you know because it's not some he, he's trying to show himself out to be that he's a good person rather than you know the evil that he is that he was kind of forced to do this out of necessity rather than he was you know just randomly spurred on to do it 
So to continue, he goes, he says, um, were you a nationalist? He says, yes, predominantly an ethno-nationalist, which is kind of obvious. I place importance on the health and well-being of my race above all else. He goes, were you a Nazi? Now, this one is a very interesting one because this is a very, very clear and very direct question, critique, and response to the media and their portrayal of Nazis or their inclination to call anyone, especially white nationalists, neo-Nazis or Nazis at all. He says, no, actual Nazis do not exist. They haven't been a political or social force anywhere in the world for more than 60 years. Notice how it is so plain, simple, and succinct. He does not go into detail about how stupid or how silly it is to call people Nazis. In fact, his whole manifesto is very simple and very succinct. There is not a lot of fluff or BS to be found here. Um, there are some sections that are longer than others that I have omitted for time. But you'll notice that you know he, he, he's not being very goofy about it. He is being very matter of fact. So I just want to point that out to show you guys that he has indeed thought this out. That this is, this is not crazy ramblings of some random man. He goes, uh, were you slash are you an anti-Semite? He goes, no, a Jew living in Israel is no enemy of mine, so long as they do not seek to subvert or harm my people. So, are you a neo-Nazi? That is a very broad category of people, and the definition is fuzzy at best. So, no, I don't believe so. Were you slash are you a conservative? No, conservatism is corporatism in disguise. I want no part of it. Were you slash are you a Christian? That is complicated. When I know, I will tell you. I'm sure that this exists to throw you guys for a loop. I'm pretty sure. Um, especially with being how succinct he has been thus far. And how pretty sure of himself he's been. Um, that, that That's kind of weird to me, honestly. The fact that he won't take a stand on that. It goes on, were you such, are you a fascist? He says, yes, for once the people that will be called a fascist is actually a fascist. I am sure the journalists will love that. Again, a direct critique of the mainstream media and journalism. I mostly agree with Sir Oswald Mosley's view and consider myself to be an ecto-fascist by nature. The nation with the closest political and social values to my own is the People's Republic of China. Was there a political figure or party in history most, uh, you most associate yourself with? And he goes, Sir Oswald mostly. He goes, um, were you, since are you a homophobe? Again, see, the critique of homosexuals in our society has made people become incredible social pariahs. Um, his question here seems really out of place. Like, it, like it, it wouldn't even be relevant. Um, bearing in mind that, you know, Muslims are not, you know, are not fine of homosexuals either. Um, so to include the question, why are you a homophobe or are you a homophobe is him directly trying to state or show you guys that, um, even the idea of being a homophobe or being homophobic will paint you as an awful human being. And he is trying to show you guys that he is not awful. He's trying to show you guys that he is actually the hero. And this, again, this analysis of trying to paint himself out to be as if he's actually the hero of his own tale is because, again, the critiquing of homosexual people in mainstream society makes you look awful. People hate homophobia. They hate it when you say something mean or negative or nasty about gay people. This is what that question is a direct response to. He says, no, I simply do not care about all that much what gay people do. As long as they are loyal to their people and place their hopes with being first that I have no issues. He goes on. Were you slash are you right wing? Depending on the definition, sure. Now again, notice this next response. Were you slash are you left wing? Depending on the definition, sure. So what is this about? It's obvious. He is trying he's not I don't even know if you can say he's trying to play center field, but he's trying to play like he's apolitical or trying to play like he cannot be placed on any political spectrum in order to cause chaos between the left and the white and, and the left and the right wing. Because you can't place him anywhere in particular. Now obviously people are gonna place him on the alt right just because he's a nationalist. So his ploy here, I'm not sure entirely if it would if it would work. However, I, I can see exactly what he's trying to do by saying that he is left wing then the right wingers will use him as an example of how the left is causing destruction if he says that he's right wing 
then the left will use him as an agent that is trying to cause destruction. Either way it goes, the left and right wing will have another issue to fight about as if they do not have plenty of issues to fight each other about at all. That's what this intent there was, clear and obvious. Were useless, are you a socialist? Depending on the definition, um, worker ownership and the means of production, it depends on who those workers are and their intent, who currently owns the means of production, their intent, and who currently owns the state and its, and its intent. Again, another direct quote, or I'm sorry, direct challenge against the mainstream media. Were you such are you a supporter of Donald Trump? As a symbol of renewed white identity and common purpose, sure. As a policymaker and leader, dear God, no. He's, so he's playing, again, again with him playing both sides. Why is he doing this? Again, his entire goal was to cause division. That's it. His entire goal is to stir up chaos and animosity between two different sides. You can't place him anywhere, but because people are so politically charged and because people want a villain to fight so often or some evil person to show that they're good so often, if he plays both sides, they're going to be fine about him forever. You can't put him in one place or the other because you directly have in his manifesto, literally baked into it, you have him playing both sides and him flip flopping or him not taking a stance somewhere. That's that's his purpose. He thought this out and he knew that that is what was going to happen and that's the reaction that he is hoping for. So I'm gonna skip around and get to another part that I wanted to point out here. He goes. Is there a particular person that radicalized you the most? And this is actually very interesting. I want you guys to notice that because this part here, here just seems incredibly trollish. Okay, and then we're going to get to other parts that seem like he's definitely not to be taken seriously, although he really is. Um, he goes, is there a particular person that radicalized you the most? He says, yes, the person that influenced me above all else was Candace Owens. Now, for those of y'all who don't know, Candace Owens is a black conservative woman that used to, I don't know if she still does, make short conservative videos sharing her opinion on YouTube. Her opinions were pretty standard and normy. She didn't really take a hard line stance on anything. So to say that Candace Owens, now now here's what's, what's, more, what's crazier still is the fact you have to Keep in mind the context that this guy is a white nationalist or an ethno-nationalist in his nature. To be influenced by a black woman that I don't even think, to my knowledge, has never even spoken about white nationalism. I don't think she has. I, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. Just seems really left field. And Candace Owens in particular seems very left field because Candace Owens does not take a hard line political stance on it. She's very normally conservative here. She's not... A, she's not over here shouting unpopular conservative opinions. The only thing that's really hallmark about Candace is that she's black. That's it. And and those of y'all who've watched Candace Owens knows that to be the case. I believe in my heart that this point here is this this is, is probably some kind of red herring. I don't I can't really put I can't really put my finger on why he would call out Candace Owens here, but I cannot believe that it is genuine based on who Candace Owens is. Candace Owens is is, is very far from a hardline political person, she's very normy to you. So for him to be influenced to such a degree by her just does not seem right. And let's let's keep reading. He says, each time she spoke, I was stunned by her insights, and her own views helped push me further and further into the belief of violence over meekness. Though I will have to disavow some of her beliefs, her extreme actions calls, I'm sorry, the extreme actions she calls for are too much even for my taste. Again, this this has to be trollish because. Candace is a particularly normy tier. She, she's very far from being very violent. So the last couple of things I'm going to be reading off before I get to my uh, conclusion. Uh, and, and I really, again, show you guys just how much of a troll post this this really is. And like why it's, it's so awful and dangerous, right? He goes, he says, from where did you receive research slash develop your beliefs? He says, the internet, of course, you will not find the truth anywhere else. He goes, how did you develop research, receive your ideas? Over a great deal of time from a great deal of places. Um, so obviously, <laughs> these two questions are, I mean, they're basically the same question, right? Basically, him being redundant here. Is there any particular person? Okay, I just read that. Myself, I'm sorry. He goes, were you taught violence and extremism by video games, music, literature, cinema? And he says, yes, Spiral the Dragon 3 taught me ethno-nationalism. 
Fortnite trained me to be a killer and to floss off the corpses of my enemies. You know, see, and this sounds like some, like a joke. <laughs> like he, like you can't possibly be taking him seriously. And that's the point. That's, that is my friends, the point. Because again, I want to show you guys, this is a direct critique of our culture. You'll notice that whenever these types of awful events occur, whenever these, these awful events happen, Media, movies, television, gay video games, of course, are oftentimes used to explain how this person was baked in violence. Toxic masculinity is baked in the video games and is forcing men to become these terrible, awful human beings. That is what he is directly critiquing. So if someone tries to say that it was the video games, it was the media that tried to make him this way, his direct response is, yes, Spiral the Dragon and Fortnite. It's a joke. It's a, it's a clear and it's clear and obvious bullshit, but that's the point. Again, he is directly critiquing how the mainstream media and journalists report on these different types of spree killings. So uh, this is the last section I'm going to read out before I uh, bring this video to a close. It goes, why did you choose to use firearms? He says, I could have chosen any weapons or means. A TATP filled rental van household flower and method of dispersion and an ignition source, a ball peen hammer and a wooden shield, gas, fire, vehicular attacks, plane attacks, any means were available and I had the will and I had the resources. I chose firearms for it would affect for the effect it would have on social discourse. The extra media coverage they would provide and the effect it could have on the politics of the United States and thereby the political situation of the world. The U.S. is torn into many factions by its Second Amendment along state, social, cultural, and most importantly, racial lines. With enough pressure, the left wing um, within the United States will seek to abolish the Second Amendment, and the right wing within the U.S. will see this as an attack on their very freedom and liberty. This attempted abolishment of rights by the left will result in a dramatic polarization of people in the United States and eventually a fracturing of the U.S. along cultural and racial lines. Again, if that is not a very direct critique of the media or a very direct critique of our culture, I don't really know what is. In fact, there's probably a lot more I could find in this manifesto, but um, I don't really want to, you know, peruse myself into the dark thoughts of evil for too long. In conclusion, my friends, I, I want to say this. There's a, there's a lot to be learned, a lot to be said here. And I think one of the most important things that we can learn here is that this guy was created by our culture our culture of division our culture of fighting and our culture of always trying to look good and be good and be virtuous um even even he himself is still affected by this by his consistency in trying to say that he's doing this for the both birth rates or he's doing this for the european people he's doing this for the european children he is not accepting his true evil he's not accepting that he is the bad person here he's only accepting so far as he's doing what he has that has to be done and that's what everyone does you know that's what everybody does in the political sphere, everyone wants to look good. No one wants to look virtuous. No one wants to look honorable. No one wants to be wrong or be the bad guy. No one wants to actually be consistent. They just want to look good in front of other people. That's all that part of the manifesto was. Um, another thing that's very important is to note that his entire goal is just to divide people. His entire goal is just to cause chaos. He's genu genuinely joker-esque here and just he is just trying to flip everything on its head and the best way to defeat this guy is to not let him but the media is already fucking lost everyone's already lost the 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 best way to beat this man which was directly in his manifesto that anyone could have read that everyone should have read was just to not let him which would mean all the left-wing people would have to do to beat this man at his own game and show him how foolish he was and how evil and stupid he was being was to not say shit about gun control. The best way to beat this guy is to say what he did was heinous and evil. He does not reflect anyone but himself. Leave him to himself. We will not allow this man to split us apart. And yet, what has the mainstream media done? It has done 
what it has always done, and what it will continue to do. And that, my friends, is what we should have taken from this. It is very unfortunate, I have to say, that 49 people, I mean, are dead. You know, ugh, I think 49 people are also injured, too. It's very unfortunate that that this is one of the most effective methods used to garner attention, you know, and to garner people to pay attention. But honestly, from from this awful event, if people have the wisdom, if people have the understanding to know what his plans are and what his evil is, and his evil is directly stated to cause division and chaos, you can beat him. Like, and, 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 and maybe it doesn't feel like a victory. Maybe he doesn't feel like he gained anything. But what you can show him and anyone else who would try this shit out is that it won't work. And I'm not talking about by just giving him like, like, like you know, like Mr. Medicare is, is, is on the path of, I don't know if he's made a video about this or if he will, but on the path of, of mocking spree killers, of, of making them look stupid so they don't ever, you know, try it again. But honestly, this isn't a guy that was looking for, for fame and, and infamy. This was a guy who was looking for a direct result of division and fighting and, and attacking each other. And the best way to win is to not let that happen. So if you watch my video, please, I would encourage you guys, again, to understand that his actions are his own and to not let that be a reflection of anyone else and to not allow this political divide to keep splitting you apart. At the end of the day, people want to live good lives. And the best way to try to figure that out is to have conversations and talk about it. Don't be divided politically. It's just not healthy for your mind. Some political people are wrong, and you can tell them that they're wrong. You can tell them that they're stupid because some of them fucking are. But don't let this shit split you apart from anyone else on any different political spectrum because that is exactly what his desire is. So don't let him win. With that being said, man, I still hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, man, then go ahead and click the like button. Shoot, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. As always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.